Video game movies suck. How about we just stop kidding ourselves and call it a day here? This next one goes out to those movie studio executives. Baby girl, please. Stop making video game movies. Look, you've been trying it for years and everything you've pumped out has been laughably bad. I mean, how did you not take the memo when the 1993 Mario movie came out? I mean, come on, look at the review scores for this movie. I mean, take a hint. But oh no, no, you'd rather keep suckling that sweet video game movie teat. Just pulling that sweet liquid until it runs dry. This looks, this doesn't look right, does it? Hitman, Max Payne, Mortal Kombat, Tomb Raider, still uh, fucking Need for Speed, uh, uh, that one, Resident Evil. What did they find in grandma's medicine cabinet that's got them pumping out these horrible movies? You see, the answer is simple. You, you see, if you want a good steak, you don't ask the baker to make it. And if I want a pet raccoon, I'm not gonna go to the pet store and buy a dog. I'm gonna go out into the wild, chase this thing down, and pick it up and take it home to be my son. Point is, don't ask people who don't give a shit about video games to make a movie based on the video game. A video game movie's just never gonna be good if you don't care about the source material. That's not to say a video game movie needs to be a direct oh. copy of the game, but if you're just gonna abandon it, why even associate it with the game to begin with? Did you know they made a Doom movie? Like the first person shooter, that Doom, they made a movie of that. I want you to imagine what you think a Doom movie would look like. Just get a, get a picture in your head, all right? Get it churned up like some butter, like some butter, churn it, churn it, all right, you got it. Now I want you to imagine the exact opposite of that and add Dwayne The Rock Johnson, that is the Doom movie. I'm gonna explain the plot of this movie as quickly as possible. So basically this group of eggheads gets together and they're like, oh, we gotta do this thing, I don't know what they were gonna do, but they go through this thing, I'm a bitch, and they're like, and they run around like, I'm Doom, I'm Doom. I don't really know, I stopped paying attention. I was playing Doodle Jump on my phone. They spend 45 minutes of this movie sneaking around. How often when you're playing Doom are you sneaking around? Never, you're not. You're shooting things and feeling awesome. To be completely fair, maybe the non-stop action just wouldn't translate well to a film. So let's bring it down to the core. When I think of Doom, I think of killing demons. And in this movie, there are no demons. The closest thing to a demon is this guy who should be put on a list. Ladies, we're under a level five quarantine, so I am just gonna have to strip search you girls. Hey, leave her alone! So the writers of this movie essentially just stomped on the plot and kicked the world building out the window. I mean, at this point, why even call it Doom? The only thing Doom related is this first person action scene. That's actually, I don't know, it's pretty cool. but I shouldn't have had to wait to the last minute of this movie to see something related to the game. And that is why Doom was a failure. If you're not gonna respect the source material when you're making an adaptation, just don't make the video game movie. Go work for Disney instead, they love that shit. And you know what else Disney loves? Oh, their favorite white boy, Tom Holland. And you might know Tom Holland for playing a little bitch in Spider-Man, but you might not know Tom Holland for playing a little bitch in Uncharted, a movie based on the video game by the same name. Yeah, Tom is meant to be portraying this guy. That's right. He is supposed to be him. Bit of a turn as far as casting goes, but you're pretty familiar with a hard left curve, aren't you, Tom? Now, if you've never played Uncharted, it's basically just Indiana Jones with less whip and more nae nae. I'm not gonna do the dance, I'm just gonna say it. God, what the f Now, if you've never played Uncharted, it's basically just Indiana Jones with less whip and more nae nae. You run around the world as Nathan Drake, collecting all these little trinkets and treasures. And unlike Doom, the movie actually takes that plot and runs with it. While the story wasn't fantastic, I, the problem is really just with these characters. I, 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 I hate them. Both of the main characters are just completely different from how they are in the game. Where game Nathan might say something like this. Is that an ancient Tibetan ritual dagger in your pocket? Oh, maybe I'm just happy to see you. Yeah, movie Nathan will just drop one of these on you. Yeah, I should not come out to play with a big boys, Wayne, because you're about to get a proper Scottish welcome.
I'm sorry? Now don't get me wrong, I, I think Tom Holland is a phenomenal actor. He just somehow managed to turn Nathan Drake from a wet rag of a man to a moist towelette of a man, if that makes any sense. And look at that, they got Mark Wahlberg in the movie. Yeah, that's great, that's great casting, you know? He does in this movie what he does in every movie. Uh, he gets down on all fours, starts running around the set of the studio, and he starts screaming, I'm Mark Wahlberg, I'm Mark Wahlberg. I love you, Mark. Keep it up. If you don't think too hard about the video game and where it came from, you just take it for what it is, it's a good movie. But the writers just didn't understand the characters or the journeys that they were on, and so Uncharted failed. You see, the funny thing about Mark Wahlberg is this is not the first time he's done this. Travel all the way back to before he was Sully, he was the star of the show in 2008's Max Payne. See, I can't even blame Mark for this one, though. Max Payne falls victim to the second reason why video game movies never work, which is that they always get lo- you see, the average movie runs to be about two hours, ten minutes long. And the average video game runs to be ten hours. Meaning that most video games are five times longer than movies. And when you try to take this beautiful ten hours of story and development and crunch it down to be two hours, it is going to be confusing. Max Payne's biggest criticisms were that the plot just it just didn't make any goddamn sense. Mark Wahlberg and Mila Kunis are in two movies together. Max Payne and Ted. It's just mind-blowing to me that of these two movies, it's the one with the Peter Griffin weed-smoking, titty-sucking teddy bear that makes the most sense. You can't just take all of that story and crunch it down, or it's not gonna make sense, which is why Max Payne failed. And there are so many other movies that fall victim to this. Tomb Raider, somehow confusing and boring. Mortal Kombat, this one was confusing, but I actually kinda liked it. Resident Evil, to be completely fair, the game is confusing too. And Assassin's Creed. I'll be honest, I love Assassin's Creed, and I was so hyped for this one, and it shattered my world with its insanely boring plot. I don't wanna talk about it too much, it doesn't even deserve my time. It just decided to be two movies, and neither one of them were good. None of these movies were able to condense the plot of their video game counterparts, and therefore, they failed. Now on the flip side of that, Jesus. Taking a game with no real plot and trying to stretch that out and turn it into a cohesive story for a movie is a huge challenge. To point out the 1993 Mario movie again, I mean, they just took some of the, like, core elements of Mario and ran with them 80 miles south, found a little wet ditch and got in there and rolled around in all the mud, just started getting it all over their clothes and their bodies started getting naked and rolling around in the mud. I mean, how do you go from this? to this. I just don't, it just doesn't make sense. What makes you think you can take one of these nonsensical video game characters and just plop him into a cohesive story and it'll make sense? I mean, take Sonic for instance, right? His stories are just confusing as hell. I don't really know what happens. I think he's like a werewolf at one point. All I know is he's a blue hedgehog and he runs around collecting coins. There's no way you're gonna turn that into a movie that makes sense. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Every video game movie I've watched over the years has just been more and more disappointing. Of all things to break the curse, I just, I didn't think it was gonna be the blue rat. But somehow the Sonic movie is fun and light and the studio listens to the fans because when they release this design of Sonic that looks like Weasel from DC Comics, that's a niche reference, nobody's gonna get that, but this looks like Weasel from DC Comics. They spent a year on this movie fixing how Sonic looked because the fans Ask them to. Although ask may be a bit of a, an understatement. The concept of Sonic is absurd and this movie takes that and embraces it. It runs with it. Do you see what I did there? They also added in who I'm pretty sure are completely new characters who are along for the ride and, and kind of experience this insanity along with you, which just, it adds to the humanity of the film in my opinion. It makes it feel more real. Sonic the Hedgehog is a good fucking movie. It understands what it wants to be, and it has respect for the source material. At least in the idea that he's a blue hedgehog that runs around collecting rings. I mean, sure, the movie's geared towards kids, but honestly, the games are made for kids, right? Or, or at least they were. You know, now they're made for people who hate Sonic. You know, maybe that's just it, though. You know, these video games are just too silly to make into movies, so they've gotta lean into that. You know, you can't take a video game and turn it into something serious in tone, you know? That's just gonna come out stupid. Yeah, you could do whatever you want. Over the last few weeks, I've been watching HBO Max's adaptation of The Last of Us, and I went in pretty skeptical and was very surprised. You see, this is a video game adaptation that not only has respect for the source material, but love. The showrunners obviously have so much care and 
passion for these characters and the journey that they're on. Every single scene from this show is shot and performed expertly, even scored with the original soundtrack from the game. You see, unlike other video game adaptations, The Last of Us doesn't try and crunch its story down into an incomprehensible two hours, but instead it lets it play out naturally, the same way it does in the game through nine hour-long episodes. Nothing here got lost in translation. The writers for this Last of Us adaptation, they get it. Finally, they're starting to get it. And as great as this show is, it's still the needle in a haystack of uninspired video game adaptations. As much as I enjoyed The Last of Us or Sonic, I can't definitively say video game movies are getting better. What I can say is that it's made me realize we... This isn't the first time we've gone down this road. Books turned into movies. The outcry of people saying, the movie sucks, the book is better. You see, I've read and watched Harry Potter and both versions make me want to Avada Kedavra myself. But see, it doesn't even stop there. We have comic book movies. I mean, look, the first Hulk, the X-Men movies, Batman Forever, when Batman had the nipples. Why did he have nipples? They, these movies were garbage. I mean, they're my garbage, you know, I love them, but objectively, Horrible creations. Through all the troubles and missteps, these book adaptations brought us things like Jurassic Park or The Lord of the Rings. And comic book adaptations, you know, once they were taken seriously, brought us things like Spider-Man 2 or The Dark Knight. And now looking at the top 10 highest earning films, four of them are comic book movies. I'm not saying video game movies are gonna do the same as book or comic movies. I'm just saying maybe there's hope. I'm gonna do what I've regretted doing at least a million times, and I'm gonna get my hopes up. As I'm recording this video, the new Mario movie has just come out. 30 years of mediocrity has gone by since the first one, and at this point, I'm just, I'm not sure what to think. Have they learned from all these mistakes? Is this the end of the terrible video game movie era? I don't know, but there is something poetic about the idea of Nintendo 30 years later, turning it all around with the same IP that started it all. I can make all the assumptions and judgments I want to, but ultimately I'm, I'm not gonna know until I go and watch the movie. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go watch the movie. And you're coming with me. It was good. Now I'm not gonna spoil it, so don't worry about that. I'm just gonna say it was a fun movie. I'm sure thousands of sweaty men who use Axe body spray are gonna go around saying this was a soulless cash grab, but the movie was entertaining and fun and it did exactly what it set out to do. And when I sat down in the theater, it was pretty packed in there. And generally that would make me anxious because frankly, I'm terrified of someone trying to murder me in a public place. But this time around, I wasn't so nervous because they were all middle schoolers. So even if they all came at me at once, I think I could still beat them. Just pick up one of the skinny ones and start using them like nunchucks. Anyway, there was this kid who sat down next to me and he obviously loved Mario. He had on the whole costume and he was bouncing up and down with excitement. He laughed at every single joke in this movie. And as he laughed more, I found myself laughing more too. The pure joy he felt watching this movie was contagious. And I'm no professional reviewer, but any film that can do that for even just one kid? It's nothing I would ever call soulless. Maybe we're at a turning point, you know? Maybe these kids who grew up loving these video games are finally old enough to be the people behind the film adaptations. Or maybe the video game movies were never necessarily bad to begin with. Just not all for me. I like to think even in the original Mario movie, there was somebody in the audience there oozing with excitement the same way that kid sitting next to me was. In my opinion, that makes it not a failure. Just not necessarily for me. Please keep making video game movies, you know? I'm sure some of them aren't gonna be that great, but as long as you're making them with that one kid in the audience in mind, I think it's worth the risk. Unless you're one of the people behind the Assassin's Creed movie, you sick fuck. Please click this video right here. It's a video where I poorly explain the plot of Resident Evil 4. Even if you haven't played the game, it's still like a funny video that I did. Just go ahead and click that right now. Okay.